streaming out live to Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Hoboken Talks. We're on Thursday nights. We talk about Hoboken. We've had some great Hoboken Talks, including uh, Greg Dekila, uh Leah Lastikoff of Stevens, Bob Dreshoff, Liz Nadoy from the art world, and the list goes on. Uh, tonight, we're inviting you to use YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook to join in the conversation, ask questions, uh, give us moral and other support. Uh, my name is Terry Prancis, and I'm your host tonight. And uh, our guest tonight is the uh, found, not the founder, but the CEO of uh, Huffnagel Landscaping Design and Construction, Valerie Huffnagel who's probably known to many of you. So here is Valerie, and uh, it's great to see you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I know you're known to the museum uh, and all of its members and for quite some time, but uh, um, we're going to start with a little a little history. And as I said, you, you were not the founder no. of uh, Huffnagel landscape. We use the short word. Yes, here. that's fine. That's fine. And, it gets uh, too long. We have an interesting backdrop here. You want to tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Um, this is actually in um, uh, the area of Union Hill, of which it was called before it became Union City. And that's my, the gentleman sitting to my right, that's my dad. And it was the family store. Huffnagel, uh, B. Huffnagel, Florist and Garden Incredible. Center. Incredible. And uh, that's my dad. It looks like they were probably getting ready for Decoration Day, which is now called Memorial Day. But they did a lot of decorating of uh, the uh, graves. And uh, they lived there. The uh, store was right across the street from Weehawken Cemetery. So they did a lot of the decorating of the graves. Certainly. And so when you, you know, I'm just looking at the flags, the uh, time of year, uh, it looks like it was probably uh, in May. And it uh, looks like there might Lots even be some. flowers out front. Yeah, it could look, looks like some geraniums, it's a little hard to tell. Street. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's, uh, you know, there's a few shots. And, and actually, if I move my head, there we go. That would be my great grandmother, Anna. Oh, incredible. Yes, she was my, uh, my dad's grandmother. And uh, they had the store, um, they came, they were probably the late 1890s. Where did um, they come from? Well, I believe my grandfather was born here and his dad came from Germany. I see, okay. But Anna, uh, I believe, uh, came, uh, came over and uh, the late 1890s, he started doing the uh, garden center and he built quite a large business. And they do the trees at Christmas and the wreaths at Christmas and, you know, uh, all of the store decorations, um, uh, carnations and, and uh, uh, boutonnieres for um, the uh, graduations Events. and yep. yeah, proms, proms and things along that line. Right. So, yeah, they uh, the store currently, I mean, it's obviously all been gone, but it was on uh, Union Turnpike. And what sits there currently is the Union City Board of Education. Now, have you ever looked into, uh, did they come through Hoboken and what time of, uh, what ship? Yeah, no, I, I didn't. To, I, I, Bill Miller. I, Bill yeah. Miller needs to jump in on this and help us. Yes, I need to do more research. It's having the time to do it. I've done sure. a bit and I have a lot of it, but it's like sitting down and really like focusing and, and seeing where everybody is. Uh, uh, you know, came from and, and who's who in, yeah. in, in the family. So the, the people up on top were workers. Um, okay. I think the guy with the hat, his name was Henry, if I'm not mistaken. This is all information that my mom gave me That's and great. I wrote them on the back so that it's like, who well, are let's turn people? that around. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that works tonight. Who are these people? <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. I think we have a couple other great shots here from the history of Huffnagel. Hey, Jennifer, JCS. It's good to see you. There you go. Yeah. Hi. So you have a lot of fans. There you go. <laughs> um, there's the that's actually the side. And um, you can see I think the it's wreaths. a little later shot. Yeah. It's a great the, shot, the, too. The wreaths at Christmas time. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, Huffnagel Florist. 
I'm assuming they did a lot of other, you know, when, when you say florist and garden center, uh, you know, the idea of florists is really, you know, the bouquets, the, you know, uh, for weddings and things like right. that. I'm not quite sure, but I'm assuming that's what they also did. One of, our, one of our uh, trust, uh, previous trustees, Rich DeVita. Oh, I've met Rich. Yes. Yeah, hi, Rich. Hey, Rich. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for checking in. Oh, and here's a golden lily. Yes. This is, if you don't love the story, you've got to love the car. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Yes. And it's just, you know, I, I, I love the, uh, the awnings. And actually, if you go close, it actually has B. Huffnagel uh, on the awning. Oh, um, yeah, I see Yes, that. you can see it. But, yeah. uh, and B stands for Bernard Huffnagel. And he was, uh, he was my great grandfather who started the whole process. And, um, you know, he, uh, he did a uh, fabulous business supposedly. And, uh, he died in 1940 and it was my, he left the store to his wife, Anna and my dad. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but 1942 rolled around and the war was to go. going. My dad actually served, uh, I guess because my brother was born and whatever, but he served in the shipyards of Kearney. Okay. So that's how he did his, the war efforts. Sure. And, uh, Close Anna enough. could not manage the store. She didn't have the experience. She didn't know anything about plants. She just, you know, um, so they wound up, he, she wound up selling it to my grandfather, which was my dad's father. And, uh, he kept it until about 1949. And then this, the, uh, the, I'm not, I'm, I guess, assuming it's a state, uh, came in and wanted the land for, um, public housing. Do you know if they were, um, growing any of their own here? I don't or know. I, sure. From what I understand, you know, if you look at this housing site now, this property went all the way back up. So up the hill I on see. 39th yeah. street. Okay. So I would assume it, it really did have, um, they would have growing. Some of it there. Yeah, Lots of growing fields happen. Excellent. Wow. Hey, there's a fellow, you know. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jim. Hi, Jim. Thanks, nice for, you to thanks join for checking us. in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone I saw maybe an hour ago. Yeah. Okay, thank you. He's terrific. Kate. Hey, and Kate. Kate. Wow. These are amazing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Another thank you. trustee, I believe. Exactly. And uh, exactly. someone that's worked with us. So, uh, here we so are you're today. not in Union Hill anymore no, or no, no, no. Union City. Right. Uh, where are you now? And and uh, how did you get there? You how did I get there? You, you mentioned having to move because of a, a project that the, the city or the state right, was undertaking. Right. And, and so when did that happen? And well, my dad started doing the landscaping around when he came from the war. When the war was over in 45, he started doing his little thing with landscaping and gardening. Now, my parents at that time, they lived on 39th Street in Union City, okay. and they were going to move up to the country, which was okay. North Bergen. Mm -hmm. 86th Street, okay. North Bergen, between 86th it. and West, it, it of, was 86th and 88th County. Street, Hudson County, <laughs> that was. And and at that with that, you had uh they had no street lights at that time. And we're talking, well, I was born in 56, so they probably moved up there in 54. Okay. And there were no street lights, the roads weren't paved. Amazing. And my baby pictures, you can see all the framings of the houses going up oh, wow. in, in the background. Oh, yeah. So, um, uh, but that's what it was. That was the country. And they had a significant amount of space, but not commercial. So my dad really just kept things on a small scale, uh, one or two trucks, okay. and kept things going. And then by 1986, he was 70, and he just couldn't do it anymore physically. He just, you know, um, arthritis. There's a and, lot of... It's a lot of physics, absolutely. In, in the nature of your work. Sure. So he, uh, he, he then, I, I was like saying, well, you know, I was working for somebody doing completely different. It's like, what can I do? I wasn't happy, uh, you know, and uh, I said, let me take over the business. Wow. Well, we're lucky and uh, I think and, you're lucky. Yeah, right? I think so. And, I you know, I think, it, well, if I can estimate one thing, I can estimate something else. So <laughs> I, 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 I started taking Amazing. courses at Rutgers. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I learned the, the plants, the trees, the this, the that, uh, and how to build things. And I worked the business until 93, I believe my son came into the business. Oh, Jason. Nice. Wow. And when he came into the bit, oh, there he is. There he is. Okay. Um, when he Screen came left. into the, when he, <laughs> when he came into the business, I was able to 
really uh, expand because he was on the job site. I didn't have to be on the job site. So I could do design work and I could do estimating and all I right. could do things off of the job. Otherwise, I was on a truck all the time. Yeah. Speaking of yeah. trucks, how many are there? We saw a bunch of them. <laughs> well, there, we have four um, that <laughs> okay. were in that picture and we yeah. still have Great them. Great green trucks. Absolutely. Everybody knows them. Everybody town. knows them and they're usually blocking traffic. So that's how I, you know, tell people to a recognize few honks, me. Right? Yes, honks, honks, honks. <laughs> honk if you love me. And yes. we have another truck. Um, that's the maintenance truck. It's okay. not the same color green but it's, we're okay with that. Cool. And uh, plus a lot of pickup trucks and trailers and machines, bobcats, Ventrax, machines, sure. a variety of things in our right. warehouse. And you must have access to more when you have Oh, more absolutely. Of the absolutely. Projects. We just right. actually bought a, 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 a backhoe in January because we needed one. And we, it's a small one, but we needed to get into certain yards. And believe it or not, we can get them into certain yards in Hoboken. That's amazing. So and not helicopter. No, no helicopter. Not <laughs> okay, yet. Not checking. yet. Maybe, just you know, checking. sometimes the only way you can get things in. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> says that's the fun part of the job. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. Um, and who's what's, there? what's the most fun part of the job? I think who's the, there with you, uh, Jason. Well, Somebody a lot of us know absolutely. from museum activities, including garden tours. Val D'Antonio, <laughs> who's also known as the other Val. Um, I call her little Val just because she's shorter than I am. But she is a ball of energy. And I could, you know, I've got the left hand and the right hand right there with me. Good. Those Perfect. two, uh, you know, she's always there. You know, you need her. Let me do it. I'll take care of it. Pop, 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 pop. Always. Um, and she actually arranges for all of our uh, flower organ flowers that we order, and we have hundreds of thousands of flowers that come in for the for the early spring, for the summer, for the fall. Can you know, the mums of this and that. Uh, she's ordering seasons. mums now, and she's right. working uh, with getting the bulbs ordered. And you know, this stuff has to be done long before. You're planting bulbs in November. You have to order them now or there, in, there won't be any left. So she also coordinates, which is so challenging, um, coordinates all of the garden cleanups that we do. So when we build a garden, we tell people, you know, we'll take care of it for you. And it's uh, two times a year, three I times see. a year. Right. Not, right. It's not every week or anything, but they need it done. So she coordinates that. I see. That's, and, that's it, you know, big, we yeah. follow the sweeper. So oh, she, she can tell smart. you, she can tell you when the sweeper is on every street, on what block, on what block, right. what side block, what time, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Whether it's early in the hour, exactly. late in the hour. Exactly. And, the, uh, and we coordinate factor. the job through the sweeper. <laughs> oh man. Oh my. Well, it works. It works. It's right? what you got to do. Exactly. It's a method. Um, it's great to see her there. Yes. And she's been uh, very helpful. In oh. fact, in, recommending some some of your gardens to uh, the garden tour mm -hmm. but, and and she's very active in the um, Hoboken Garden Club as well yes and amazing lady lots of energy very organized oh yes totally organized Any, absolutely anybody else we should talk about um well if we go to the next slide we will also see Giovanni aha uh -huh. now Giovanni this is an old picture so a few years ago okay um he was the head supervisor Giovanni is now part of part of Huffnagel. He's a he's ownership of That's Huffnagel. Uh, -huh. uh he's vice president. Great. And he's, you know, he's I I've known Giovanni God 20 years at least, if not more. Amazing. And I saw him when he was young and I saw how qualified he was that he could think and think ahead and know what to do and manage the staff. And, you know, he was second to Jason. It's like, how do you get so many? You can't, right. not to me. And he had the brawn to get things done too. So he's now part of the company. So Super. that's, that's, that's uh, Giovanni. I call him my other son. Okay. Okay. Got because it. he Got really it. is. Superb. Well, ah. here is what you and, and your group um, encounter often. <laughs> which is a, a clean slate, more or less, of, of differing kinds of nature. And uh, then you have a challenge and you're working closely with the client and, and what kind of thing happens? Here? Well, you know, you walk into a site, you see it, and depending upon what the client would like, 
okay, mm-hmm. and a budget, of course. Um, but you know, what do you want to turn this into? And uh, you know, uh, if we go to the next slide, we can basically see what the after is. And the husband is a uh, musician. So he wanted his own studio. And this is a product that uh, the company Summerwood, uh, which we use a lot of, um, manufactures, and it comes either prefabbed or in pieces. This piece, this actually came in pieces and we put it all together. It was uh, heated and cooled. I didn't do the heating and cooling, but it was. And these are now, I mean, through COVID and people working at home, these have become very popular. Right, right. This site happens to be in Brooklyn, but it's the same dynamics, dynamics older buildings, absolutely. narrow entrance, absolutely. Ways, <laughs> yards in the back. <laughs> Everything's exactly. attached. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> the neighbors don't want too much noise. <laughs> a lot of issues. Exactly. But, you know, it gave them a, uh, a space. Um, th- which could be anything from, you know, a, a the music studio that it created to a office workspace, uh, a yoga studio, a, you know, people work out with gyms today in these, these type of yeah. things. Yeah. So it just really created a nice, uh, nice environment. Plus we finished the patio and actually we gave them a deck so that they had nice level space. And, and it looks like some of the trees you worked around. We, we kept the trees. Absolutely. Trees, absolutely. We kept them. Uh, really critical yes in all these urban environments when you when you look at the trees you know if you take these trees down all of a sudden everything becomes you know it 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 it, it everything becomes so large and so tall and you're looking up at everything when the trees are here you bring everything down to human scale so you feel better hey d thanks for checking in <laughs> um but that's what you know, it, it helps you feel like you're not surrounded by massive buildings. Right, right. Even though you are. It makes it absolutely uh, warm, friendly, Correct. natural. Yes. Um, usable in, in different seasons. Hey, Kendra, Incredible. thank you for checking in. Okay. Now, this looks like a before. <laughs> That's a challenge. I, well, you know, I like gardening. Yes. This, uh, <laughs> I, I, th- I think even I would give you that call well, <laughs> <laughs> real quickly. <laughs> this is something, well, you know, when you're renovating a, a home in these neighborhoods, um, uh, the only staging area the contractor has is the backyard. True. And it's also where they store all their junk. So things get thrown out the window and whatever yep. until, so this is what this was uh, when I first showed up to see the site. And then we create something again, based upon what the owner wants and what they like. And, you know, a lot of it factors in where they have children, the age of the children, what they want to do, Um, you know, what they want that space to become. Uh, Also practical or both. Exactly. And, and so much of, and, you know, a lot of people are not into the whole gardening aspect. You know, some people really like a lot of garden and, 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 you know, flowers and plants. Other people just want it nice, neat and clean and they don't have to True. do a whole lot. So these are the, these are factors. And you're that the entertainers are. and the non-entertainers, right? <laughs> exactly. And exactly. That, that's another factor. Sure. So here we go to the next slide and that's what it became. Well, I think we had some entertainers. Very, <laughs> very nice space. This uh, is, this is summer. one of our previous board. Um, oh no, I'm, some, I'm sorry. Trish is still on the board, uh, Trish Gallagher. And, uh, you know, it is an artificial turf, uh, which works best in our environment. Uh, as much as I like real grass and we do cut a lot of it in Hoboken, it's, it's a challenge. It's a challenge in these locations, um, because, uh, they don't receive a whole lot of sunlight and it may not be there, you know, it might not be that they have a tree over them, but between the building on the left and the building in the back, right. they don't get a whole lot of sunlight. Right. The right. drainage the is poor. Limited. The soil is very clay, uh, you know, and and nobody wants to own a lawnmower. Where are you putting it? You know, and uh, so, you know, the we built a fireplace. This is a gas fireplace. Um, the trees in the background, the horn beams will grow nice and thick and full. So okay. it will get a nice backdrop. Great, uh, great. The fence is a, um, uh, I believe it's a tongue and groove fence that we did and a nice stain to it just to kind of tone it down. 
Um, and then there's bluestone, which is surrounded by brick. Yeah, that really is outstanding. And closest, the closest to us, you'll see that there's also some trees here. And those are hornbeams, too, because when you design a garden, you don't just look at what's behind you from this, your house. When they're sitting out by that fireplace and they turn around, what do they see? And right next to them, so right. that's what those trees so are kind of them. right visual blo blockage. I see some hostas. Are you, are oh yeah, those for uh, <laughs> deep shade, thriving yes. in the shade. Yes. Okay. Yes. Some of the other situations. And wow, at look night. at that. Yes. Now this is where we should be tonight. Right? <laughs> we should have borrowed this. We Did should have. You, Trish? Yes, yes, Trish, 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 where are you? Yes, <laughs> we're coming up, or we're doing the second you half know, from your, your place. Some nice night lighting. Just you know, you don't want it to look like giant stadium, but you just want to have it bright enough. It's a security. It's nice to have the light, the yard lit. Right. But in addition, it just and, and you know, so many of of our clients have. I think they're called nano doors. Um, but they're the, they're a glass pane door all the way across the back of the brownstone and they open. Right, um, right. This allows the whole outside to be brought in visually when you're it sitting is. in your living room, it even is. if it's, it's the middle wonderful. of the winter right. and you're not right. outside. Right. Hey, Chris, <laughs> that's my nephew. How neat. Look at that. Thanks. Is it hard Good to, to find a, a place in winter and designing for summer? Is it hard to see a place in winter? Not That's at a good all. Question. It is not That's at a really all. Good question. It is a good question. We see a lot in winter. Actually, the, I have some uh, photos uh, go back where the ground is covered in snow. <laughs> so, and I have to come up with the plan. But um, no, it's you know you you for for us in this area, you can really get a good. I want to say nine to 10 months of the year. Okay. And with heaters today, you know, and you have the fireplace. Right. Right. You know, uh, it's, you get it's more, more you, months you get a lot out of, of use it. Out of it. Many, yes. many months out of it. Yes. And, and, and we've learned some tricks, unfortunately, because of COVID. Exactly. That we've learned those. Exactly. You know, we're like the Parisians. We're out there <laughs> eating in 40 That's degree right. weather. That's right. With, with, now. with the heat lamps. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, this is this is a previous board member of okay. uh, Garden too. Oh, nice. um, wow. I didn't just choose it for this, but these are some of my favorites. Um, the challenge here are the trees, and we wanted to keep the trees. Uh, the yard was always a mud pit because of the trees. You couldn't. It's like they got no sun whatsoever, and uh, the roots of the trees just take up more they're, they're, everything, everything, water, they're nutrients, around. everything yeah. than any type of grass. So finally, uh, the, the O'Callaghan's decided to engage me and create a space for them. So um, next slide, we'll show you how we kept the trees. You can see them on the right and the left. Um, and oh, yeah. what we did That's was wonderful. we built an, we, we, um, we did a step up of about eight inches for a deck space that we call it a ground deck or actually a wood patio, um, but it allows for the trees to stay. And we worked around the trees and we also, um, uh, we also created a banquette in uh -huh. the backyard, all be built. Yeah. Uh, oh, the wood cool. that's used is all Ipe, uh, which is a Brazilian oh, hardwood. Such a beautiful wood. Yes. And it holds up forever. Uh, right? Forever. You don't ever have Basically, to, you don't ever have amazing. to touch it. It's yes. an amazing. Yes. I, I don't have a great night shot of this, but underneath that wave, there's a light, that goes so that you can see the step up and yeah. you know it just oh, oh, oh really yeah oh that's good yeah that's just brilliant. uh it just well, i know uh jen and family there's some kids there very absolutely ages. they're getting older but, absolutely uh that that was probably important to them what a great concept and her and, mom and dad and thank you for uh you know saving the trees because uh they're what keeps the planet cool and Helps keep cities uh, and, happy and friendly. <clears throat> these are some old ones. I mean, yeah. these have been in the backyard for quite some time, uh, and you know, you just it, it, you just want to keep them if you can. Um, those for are my sure. first questions when I see someone. Are we keeping the trees? And then what do we do? To I saw a mention of some, uh, you know, water features or fountains that yes. you incorporate in others. But when does that work, or does that usually come initially from the owner? It, if, if somebody, it's nice to have the sound of water, okay, For because sure. it does drown out some of the other noises in in the neighborhood. Um, mostly, what we've done, we have done some built-in 
We've done some ponds where small right. ponds uh -huh. that we've had, koi. you know, bubbling water and koi, people having koi. Right. Um, most of the time we recommend basically the um, uh, recycling, recycling fountains that you can buy. On, there's so much available online today that Amazing. you can get from the front gates and the right. wayfarers and whatever. Uh, a lot of it is lightweight. Okay. So, uh, you know, you can get it into the house, carrying Easier it through. Work it, than it is, looks. There's a product that looks like concrete. Yeah. but it's not and uh -huh. it looks it actually looks good otherwise i wouldn't recommend it right and you know a lot of it you want to do like a vertical so yes. that you know like like between the two pieces that she has there you space. could put exactly you could put something vertical yeah. and have just something that, that plant it's coming out maybe 15 18 20 inches so you're not taking up but it's a nice and it's 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 uh it just rec recirculates within and all you just need is an outlet Nice. Plug it in. Perfect. perfect. That's it. Wonderful. Okay. A lot of imagination there. And here's another, another before, one. another challenge, challenge, I would say. Yes. You, uh, you don't always get it easy, do you? Never. Never, <laughs> never get it easy. Never get it easy. Uh, Hudson Street, this is. Uh, a few years back, this was done. And uh, Clean Slate. Dear Woods, can you use any? Oh, yes. Uh, always try to use FSC. Uh, certified wood products. That's what they're labeled. Basically, it's Forest Stewardship Council. It stands so for. So it's more uh, environmentally. So that's what they say. I, I, I I'm always a little cautious when some of these materials are coming from countries that may not have the most uh, ethical governments, but they are stamped FFC. I see. So, so something hopefully yes, is happening. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And then. Um, so you choose those when, we when you can, and look at this. Now this has a lot of garden Are you sure plants. This is the same place. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, it, it, it actually, you know, it's it's the pergola and a nice gas fireplace with a long planter edge along. So we have plants in the back, plants in the front, and really just a pathway to the back area. Uh, it, it gives me a feeling of almost a beer garden effect. Uh, the way the long bench. You know, the overhead, right. um, this is a Hudson Street project from a few years back, but another one of my favorites. Now, you've shown us a lot of, uh, here's Barbara. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. Giving you a hurrah. <laughs> great, great. Thank and you, Barbara. Another uh, trustee of, of, yes. of some past days and, and a very big uh, supporter of the music. Correct. And a great friend. Yes, very much so. Uh, it was great to see you there. And uh, I know you do some commercial as well. Yes. And, and uh, talk about how that fits or what the challenges is or uh, the differences. It, it, well, like we're, we've been doing, so we started last year doing a uh, project on Washington Street uh, with flower baskets hanging from the poles, the light oh, poles. Nice. Okay. So we started with that. It was kind of late in 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 uh coming along it took a little while for the organ this is through the hoboken business alliance okay oh, okay yeah, yeah. so it took a little yeah. while to get things started yeah, but yeah. once we got it it we we got them installed it was a little late this year we had a much better grasp on it okay. and uh you know there's about 97 baskets uh up on the poles that get and and we just put in um they're not all in but we have about 48 pots on the corners of the streets that are filled with plants. Um, we put in about 27, I think it was 25 or 27 new trees last fall in spots that were just missing. And uh, we take care of them. <laughs> that is the biggest challenge. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, they get watered. Okay. Uh, they need watering depending upon the temperature, the rainfall, so on and so forth. Sure. Uh, anywhere from two to up to four times a week. So we have a, a Ventrac machine, which we use for a variety of things, including snow. And it can ride on the street with a large water tank behind it with two people, the driver and yeah. the guy with the long wand watering everything. Okay, okay. So yeah. you, you, you go around your usual you obstacles. Both levels. Yes, you, you, you're, you're, you go around your usual, <laughs> usual obstacles of people, carriages, dogs, Parking cars, the buses, double park the cars. trucks, double park cars, the bicycles. <laughs> and now we have the streeteries. So we right, have lots of obstacles. Too. It takes love, a full day for these two guys to go sure. down and back up Washington Street. I'm sure it does. Yeah. Well. Just it's just what it what it is. So, you know, and you you're just watching out, you don't get run over by somebody. 
It's a tough <laughs> job if someone has to do it. I'm Absolutely. glad you're doing it. Absolutely. So those are some of the track all those variables. Yes, yes, it the, is. On the weather and, and what the needs are. Oh, and here's ah, another, uh, and this is probably, again, a, a personal backyard. A personal backyard, and backyard. there's a little there's a little fella back there, there is. that um, wants Looks a garden. A lost in the woods. Yes, but, lost uh, in the woods. This garden's <laughs> about tw it. 12 and a half feet wide. Um, and the the importance was, obviously, for some you know space for the adults, but also a space for the child. Right. So in our next slide, you can see some of the, uh, that's what we created. Um, a lot of these gardens are believed only 12 and a half feet wide. So what do you do? Yeah, yeah, and, sure. You know, and I, I did the raised uh, platform deck here just because it gives it a little bit more interest than just one flat surface. So, um, and the Ipe deck, and they have a fire pit there. So the Ipe deck, can, uh, because it just, um, hey, Joyce. Um, the Ipe deck uh, allows, is it's not burn proof, but it has a three hour fire rating. So, which means you can put a, 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 a project, a proper, I'm sorry, a, 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 a managed fire. If yes. You know. A managed fire okay. on it. Uh -huh. And you know, you're not going to have a problem with oh, wood incredible. burning. Yeah, yes. That's great. And then even in the back, we kind of separated the area a little bit, but they're bench height seats. So the kids and people can sit and use those little um, uh, areas as a uh, a place to sit. And then the the child has a little playground area and then further planting. Right, right. But, you know, try yeah, to make lots it- Lots of interest know, throughout. Right, and you know, you got, spots, you got kid plants. friendly, but you know, when the child is grown up, you just take that out and make it another seating space. Okay, so that's, that would be nice. Yes. How incredible. Very thoughtful, and of course, we have a lot of young families. Ah, ah we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> shift to not that we were ever totally out of it. <laughs> the Hoboken Historical Museum and mm -hmm. your your long running role here, yes. and I I was one of the chairs of the garden tour for for a number of years, and on the committee years more than that. And I know that we we tapped you and your group and the expertise, but tell us about how you really got started with, with the museum, your, your right. deeper personal involvement. Oh, I can, I, can re I can remember the phone call from Bob Foster. I was uh, actually sitting in the truck on most likely Garden Street because it was, I, I remember my streets by which direction my truck faces. Uh -huh. So I, I remember the call and I was back, it, it had to be in the, in the early, well, probably about 2007, 2008 from Bob saying, we're looking for some gardens and we were wondering maybe you can make some recommendations. I didn't know who Bob Foster was. Oh my. You know, I wow. just, sure. So it's like, all right, let me see what I can do. And, uh, I started, you know, putting things together and Val D'Antonio, um, you know, helped me because she was, she had started, she works with us and she started around back that time okay. working yep. with us. Yep. Um, and then I guess it was around 2012 or 14, we weren't sure, uh, that I started sponsoring the garden tour. Thank you. That's, you know, uh, that's um, important. The, yes. the book got a lot of fancier. When I had yes. it, it like oh. a handout. <laughs> I don't think it was mimeographed. I think we were all running to Xerox, but uh, it, was, it was pretty simple. And then we had some sponsors. Who yes. Gave some nice things away. Yes. But, it, 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 but the, the book has like Absolutely. grown it's, and it's really, it really evolved. shaped up. You know, and it's like a page for every garden. Yes. And people write. You know, I, I know the garden, the people that own the space, uh, you know, are requested to submit some information. Yep. And then we, I believe we actually have a, 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 a professional writer help write these. Um, yeah, we you do know, have them about it. down to, you um, know, keep them equal and to make sure exactly. certain things. Sometimes there's a little back and forth phone. Right. See if we covered the, the necessary points. And these flowers, along, we had done the flowers and I think we had done them for the Sinatra uh also around the same time uh these are cardboard not cardboard um uh, uh plywood cutouts oh wow oh. okay and uh it started i think it was sylvia schwartz made this okay. suggestion oh that's what it started with the cowboys when we did the uh, hoedown yeah, yeah, right. we we started cutting up we, and and yes yeah, so my team in like january february on a little bit slower time uh in our warehouse we made these cutouts of various things and then it grew to having the cutouts of the flowers and these were placed around town how fun
Yeah. So, um, and I'm not sure. I know we had contests for both the 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 um, the, the cowboys, and we had contests for the Sinatra. We probably had contests for the um, the the flowers, okay. and they were painted by different people and different things put on. I think this was done by Bill Curran, but I'm not 100% sure. This is in the in the, in the the Breezeway. Well, congrats and, to all the people that worked on it. Oh, yes. If it's Bill, good, yes, good yes. news. If it's somebody else, thank and you. And I well. just thought it was fun to was you fun. pop your head yeah. in and take some photographs. So that's me playing around. Cool, cool. Well, <laughs> well thank you for diving in. Now, about that time, you yeah. were... It's suddenly veering towards the board. Oh, yes. <laughs> like like stepping up, not just as a sponsor, but as well, like 2009. Some, oh, wait. Yeah, 2009, I was asked to join the okay. board. And I said, sure. And, uh, you know, I loved it. Um, by 2011, I was vice president. And 2012 through 2020, I was president of the board. I'm, not, I'm still not quite sure how that happened. <laughs> that, that may be a record. <laughs> yes, That's well, what I'm thinking. That's about eight years. Uh, yeah. Well, wow. they actually we actually changed. Um, uh, hey, Steve, thanks for checking in. Um, uh, we revised the bylaws because it was six years. <laughs> and nobody was stepping oh, up. So you pulled a Bloomberg. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Without That's the billion it. dollars. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I get it. And we expanded the bylaws so that it could be eight years. And oh, it's sweet. like, uh, fine, whatever. Until we have some enough people that are willing to step up sure, into this sure. yeah, you know, yeah, position. Yeah. So now I'm back to being vice president. So I'm kind of bookending it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and staying as a Transition trustee. Yeah, exactly. Keeping busy. Staying as a trustee as long as they the, want me. The new president. That's exactly. Super. Exactly. Our new president, Ellen, is doing a fabulous job. That's great. She's and a uh, just trying to, as well. yes, and I try to uh, just be there in whatever she may need, you know. Don't want to leave anybody. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ellen. <laughs> she waited to see Thanks. what we might say about her, and then she pops up. That's oh, it, very right? canny. Exactly. Very canny. Exactly. You gotta watch yourself on this show. This right? has happened before. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and now this looks very. I, I don't know if you're really an executive, or you're really hands on, or you're. Or I'm you just know, parking a cars. Grunt, or you're, you're you're taking tickets and you're doing. Uh, Ballet parking. Yeah. What are you doing? Here? Well, this was at the first time we moved out of the Elks Club, which was great, but we needed to change some and, and look for different venues. Okay. Uh, you know, you hear people saying, oh, it's at the Elks again. And not that the Elks is bad, but, you know, people like different they things like and change. Around, right. <clears throat> so we found this and it was actually Fred Beto who uh, suggested it. This is the Rue School. Oh, great place. And uh, we, uh, <laughs> Between the help of uh, my staff and the wonderful JCS, who is Jennifer Claire Scott, who saved the day. Okay. She saved the day um, by bringing in. She's a uh, she's a party event planner. I don't want to say party planner. Event planner okay. um, right. by by trade, Super. and uh, she came in and really whipped together all of her contacts to turn that room. From a gymnasium. It was in a lovely room, and look, yes. there she is. <laughs> Hello, and thank you. Thank you, JCS. Work, she that made night. that happen that yeah, night. Yeah, that was a magical uh, place. Yes, it, it was. was. And, and I think I was just trying to uh, save parking spaces outside um so that you know uh we could get deliveries you know because you know what it's well, like look, to get a parking space you have, in the, cones, you have the cones <laughs> we've already seen the truck right this is kind of like a little insider thing you have a lot of knowledge <laughs> when you can do this how you can do this. I, you know i Super. reserve parking with the parking authority like Super. i normally do yeah, but yeah, that yeah. doesn't mean anything yeah, you know people course. you can see the signs on the back of the building it says no parking but people just take the signs down the and eyesight park. is weak yes and, yes uh, Morals, maybe so I was out placing cones to keep people <laughs> away job. so that you could get it. You can get people to drive up to drop people off. And also the the issue of uh, of, um, uh, you know, deliveries. You know, we were having sure. uh, Anthony Pino um, catered that so that we were using the Beautiful back entrance food. and you had to come in and out with staff yep. and people and, 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 and uh, um, you know, catering and flowers, flowers. everything. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, yeah, you see, you need a whip and a whistle in this town to keep people from parking. You got it right. <laughs> you got it right. Okay. Quite an event. Now, you, you were very instrumental in during this period that we had 
so many great yes. exhibits. And yes. We've just picked a few um, to represent that period. Um, the immigrant experience, what, what would you say? You know, Hoboken has always been a, uh, you know, a melting pot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from from the stories that I've heard, the stories that I've read uh, from, you know, the German, the Irish, the Italian areas. And then, you know, as time changed, the, you know, the, you know, the uh, Hispanic, Puerto Rican, uh, right. you know, groupings of people. It was it's always been. Well, and it is, yeah. it's always so, you know, this is like Hoboken's Ellis Island. Yeah, this is where people came in. It was a great uh, not only exhibit, we, right. we had some wonderful lectures yes. and, and tie-ins that went on throughout that it a terrific experience well here's uh, another I <laughs> now in one one way it's not a surprise but I think we picked a good occasion what do you think yeah I think I believe we we did the celebration because it was uh, uh Frank Sinatra's 100 would have been Frank Sinatra's right. 100th birthday right. well he's still with us <laughs> yes well <laughs> <laughs> As you know, and 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 you kind know, kind of like Elvis. It's, yes, it's yes, bigger, yes. Bigger. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, we have Sinatra Drive. Yes. Uh, you know, we Sinatra have Sinatra Park. Park. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have in our museum space here, we have the Sinatra Lounge, where we have actually some art not about Sinatra, Sinatra, but by Sinatra. Correct. That was that was um, donated to us. Incredible. Yes. Story. Yes. And and uh, you know we have the whole roping off of it, so people right. don't touch it. You know, kind of thing. And but the Sinatra Lounge, you can actually come in and and you know play the records, go and you know put the, the headphones, headphones on the and, and do on. all this fun sure. stuff. Um, we've had we had the exhibit up for a long time because people just kept wanting it and wanting it. They and kept wanting coming it. from yeah. not just local. Oh, but everywhere. Well, even international yes across yes. the country they, they knew it was that year uh we have a walking tour that that shows all the sinatra sites ah yes and some of them are intact and then, unfortunately his birthplace isn't but no it's, it's marked and yes. you know where it is um but you can see where frank lived and where he first sang all yes. kinds of fun things. and when we had our um uh, uh gala that year we did have it at the elks and uh i mean it was sold out it was it, unbelievable. It was Sold out. Get a yes. And and um, I, I wish we had a bigger space. I think there yes, were some there were. Pruners. There were. <laughs> and and we were talking about this before. There was one gentleman. I don't know his name. I'm sure Bob knows his name. He was I in think his twenties. From Long Island. Could be. He was actually, in his twenties. Yeah. He was phenomenal, yeah. and I he think actually he won the you know the, the Sinatra. Trust okay. That we've had. He actually no. did something in the breezeway here too. And I was here, I think that was for the opening of the stars. We did the okay. Sinatra stars. Yeah. And uh, I was like, you know, you're 24 years old. Why are you so enthralled with Sinatra? You know, like, and he told the story of that. He grew up with his grandparents uh -huh. and he, all he ever did was listen to the music. Yeah. And that's what got him into it. And I was like, that was just so, it's just, it's a nice heartwarming story. Yeah. Of, it's a of, gift. of yeah. Because, you know, you things. Know, we had the Sinatra gift and yes. the people that are motivated and follow and, exactly. you know, uh, study that songbook. Yes. It's incredible. Yes. And he looked like him too. A bit. He was long yeah. and lanky as Frank yes, was yes. At, at the same age. Yeah. And, and this was amazing exhibit. Yeah. What the, yes. You said, Terry, this has to be one of the ones we, we uh, talk about. I love it the most, um, just because I, I love seeing the old photographs of, of people and places. Right. Right. Uh, you know, the, what, you know, you look at, you, newcomers would have no clue. I was born in Hoboken, St. Mary's Hospital. Here, here. And, and <laughs> uh, you know, then my parents Fair moved to now. the country of, of, of North Bergen. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, to see what, you know, it, it, in the, in the sixties and seventies, Hoboken really suffered a lot of decay and, and, uh, urban, urban, urban light or light. transition. Yes, yes. It, it, it was like, not sure where it was going to go. Exactly. The job, man, the jobs had gone. Yes. The, yes. The, the port had closed up. Yes. And some of the factories were so dependent on the port. Correct. So. That was something. And it yeah. became a, a, you know, a changing city, obviously. But to see what, you know, like I look at, I look at the pictures of what Sinatra Drive, which wasn't named Sinatra Drive at the time. I'm not sure. Maybe it was just, I don't know if it was River Road, but like there was nothing there. There were railroad tracks. 
And now yeah, we have this wonderful really drive with parks and stuff around. The yes, edge. yes. Yeah. And you know, and and you see buildings that were just rubble, and the kids playing in it. Yeah, the and vision, yeah, just you know, yes, fun for the better waterfront. Absolutely, other, other groups, citizen activists, absolutely uh, taking care yes. that it wasn't squandered with no. a giant opportunity. The, right, the docks were the lifeblood of the town for yes. a while, but. But then they were gone, and yep. they'd all now moved out to Mo Newark and Elizabeth and right. far points of, of Brooklyn. But, right. Um, yeah, I'm no, not sure. But this this showed us how much we still have. Yes. That is recognizable. Yes. The, the name on the storefront may be different, right. but it's still that storefront. Absolutely. You know, Washington Street's amazing that way. Absolutely. How terrific. And then upstairs where we are right now, <laughs> yep, this you is our location it, uh, in the gallery, the upper mm -hmm. gallery, uh, we've had a, a huge number of, of art and photography exhibits. This is one of the working docks, probably in the later years, probably going into the right. 50s and 60s. Yeah, that's what and, that look that it just looking at it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so uh, this is this is not the 50s of the on the waterfront. This is another 10 years later. And the produce was still coming in. Yes. So this was an amazing exhibit. I love uh, the old hook. Yeah. You know, like just that's how they grab those bales of whatever grain. Right. Well, it was wow. coming off of a yep. of a giant uh, gizmo. Yeah. Hanging from <laughs> gizmo. a gizmo. That gizmo. <laughs> that gizmo thing. We, we, there was a scary scene in the waterfront that that also showed this in use. But uh, uh, these guys are, I think, well protected. Oh. So, uh, yes. <laughs> okay. And there's another one which is an amazing. Uh, this this is a phenomenal piece of art. Yeah, uh, just yeah, that the picture you're basically seeing it from Jersey City Heights, am I correct? True. Right? True. And then looking throughout all yeah, of Hoboken. Yeah, it's aligning about with 8th Street, I'd say 7th or 8th Street. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And just like the detail in seeing every rooftop and and you know the just phenomenal. Look, I mean look at that the building on the right where you see the windows, how detailed the windows are. And you could probably see like somebody in the windows yeah, right yeah, here, yeah, you know, sure. and, and how the cornices are set. It's like, wow, just a, just a beautiful. And yeah, then, then there's Manhattan over there. Moment in time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, that's another museum. Yeah. <laughs> that's somebody else's job. Exactly. Exactly. Wonderful shows, but it's so many. It's great. We have this space. And uh, here's another gallo. Uh, well, actually, you touched on it earlier. This was yes. This was our. Uh, this was at the Rue. Um, okay, Rue School. And that was the first time I learned what a uh, step and repeat was. Okay. I just never un even <laughs> understood it, but then I got it. It's like okay, now I I see how things are lined up. So we have Bob Foster. Uh, it was a black and white event, and Bob and, there he is, and, black and, and Bob white. chose to take it to the limits. Baseball, uh, it's a exactly, game. Exactly. <laughs> and then there's Marcy Rubin, who's the uh, tw uh, News 12 well, anchor. Um, and she was our MC for the night. Yeah, she did a great job yeah. with that. Yes. It was a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah. So Very that was, upbeat. And, and you know, forward. we have our. And I think she lives here. Uh, yeah, I believe you might yes. see her I believe she does. time to time yes. in the streets. Yep. Yes. Uh, and here's an important thing. This yes. has a little different aspect of it, what the museum does. It does. This was our. Uh, this was the last gallery pre pre COVID. It okay. was uh, 2019. Uh, I think it was October. And uh, our and goal. We got Bob dressed up on this. Yes, yes, we I don't did. Know <laughs> who paid off whom? But that, I, I guess dressed to the nines just told him he had to do something. Exactly. Here. And because it was 19, we were working with everything that was nines. And our goal here, and this is Rosemary Trulio, okay. who has a uh, family. Um, uh, they history ran of a butcher shop, butcher shop here on just, just Park recently. And, for, recently. and she grew up in Hoboken. She's uh, she. I, I don't want to give her the wrong title, but I know she's involved with some sort of senior vice president at Sesame Street, involved with early education. And she wrote a book, and we decided like she was the Hoboken person of the year. Incredible. You know, besides that, she uh, grew up here. Our family still had deep roots here. Yeah. Um, we actually still have the butcher block that she oh, gave yeah. her, if her we could talk turn from. This around, we could I know share the with butcher you, block that's is a here. Practical right and, now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Hi, Jen. Jennifer, that's um, great. And and uh, you know she we our goal here was to uh, raise money for an education court uh, okay. curator, 
And uh, that's why we felt education, she dealt with early education, childhood education, uh, and she was, it's, you it's know, a theme all the exactly. Way around, all <clears throat> and the way. Uh, and I know we did raise we did raise money, and then day. COVID came along. So, so we're, no, we're, uh, no in in museum classes at that at moment. The, right, right, right. But we're we're starting them up again. We're slowly, yeah, we're slowly going back. We we were very lucky to use our breezeway, which has just like. Who knew? It has a breeze and it's an open yes. space and it even has a roof, roof. a very high roof. And who so knew? lots of air, sir. Exactly. Who knew how uh, important that would become during COVID? But it, it really was um, for, you sure. know, for all kinds of things. Yeah. And then I think uh, we got one ah, more celebratory we shot. I think you only party. Oh, if we hadn't seen all that work before. Yes, yes, yeah. I don't know who's party. party. I don't know who's party. party. But, I know but at this party. point, I'm thinking... <laughs> Wow, wow, Valerie only parties. So that, that is my darling wife, Susan, on great. the right. And then we have Mr. Eugene Flynn in the center. Mr. Personality. Mr. Mr. Personality. Mr. Hoboken. And, uh, maybe and, one of several. But, yeah. you know, Bob would give him a run for the money. Yeah, and, and he is our uh, auctioneer. And um, we, it looked like it was towards the end of the night because I think I opened my collar at that point. Uh -huh. So, yeah. and, Get you know, away. could have had a couple of drinks in me, but we were just uh, enjoying. And that was actually. At the W, it was the 25th uh, I was there. anniversary. They did a lot. They had yeah. uh, special notification and boutonnieres for the yes, the, the past trustees. Right. Um, Jim and I have both kept ours. That's right. And yes. then, uh, uh, Eugene was a longtime trustee, <laughs> and I think at one point he was VP. And Thanks, he, wife. He did some of the early. <laughs> wow, that's great. Yes, Thanks, Susan. Um, he did some of the early. Um, galas and a lot of organization yes. and yes. kind of put down the uh the parameters Correct. of what we needed to do Correct. to make uh them a success and then energize the community and absolutely sell those tickets uh, <laughs> uh, i hope we haven't lost that skill in the year and a half we've had uh, off well but, uh, <laughs> i know still trying to know how to learn how to hug again so yeah exactly yeah. exactly that's so super thanks eric and so that uh, that wraps it up here. Um, if you uh, enjoyed us, uh, please please say so. Please uh, put it in your your Twitter, your YouTube. Look for the other shows. Uh, we've got a lot of good things coming up here uh, next week in the same space. We're going to have Ron Albanese, and uh, he's a local uh, children's entertainer. So I'm sure that's going to be a lot of fun to find out the life. Uh, <laughs> maybe after hours at 7 p.m. after hours for him, it may be. And then after that, uh, Steve Zane. Steve's the chair of the very important Hoboken Historical Commission, which uh, helps us being the community right. look after our um, important buildings and uh, save them and, and look for adaptive reuse opportunities right. whenever they're possible. So that's a really good. Uh, hi, Jean. It's great hey, to Jeannie. see you. Nice seeing you. Thank you. Um, and then very big uh, news is coming up. Um, we've got, uh, well, before we get to that, we want to thank uh, a number of sponsors. Thanks, Sandy. So, so uh, Donald Sashet was kind enough to remember the museum right. in his will. And so we thank Donald and uh, other people have done the same. We thank the New Jersey Historical Commission, which actually uh, provided a grant. Yes. And some of that grant is specifically to the Hoboken Talks mm. um, series, which we are, are in and proud to be part of. And Applied. Applied um, basically provides a museum with its space and the wonderful Correct. renovated um, shipyard complex, which is its own uh, historic story. Yes. And they've been a long time a supporter on many fronts and frequently a sponsor of specific events, yes. including a number of the galas. So we thank Applied. And uh, we wanted to talk a bit about uh, the show that's coming up. And uh, that is August 1st. So, Mark, mm. if you haven't already marked it, mark your, <laughs> mark your, your calendar. Book, your calendar, put it in your phone, be here. Um, festivities start at the early afternoon and they, they go through to late afternoon. 
um, you're going to see Washington Street, which is our, our mm -hmm. main street. But in the good old days, it was called the Avenue. Oh, really? Yeah. I yeah. didn't realize you that. Didn't know that. No. Yeah. So that's actually the name of the show. <laughs> ah, it's not yes, a history of Washington Street. That's the subtitle. The name, the name is The Avenue. See on the Avenue. Because somebody would say, and I remember this first living in Willow Terrace, and about half the people there uh, had grown up on the terrace. Right. And so half of them had inherited their houses <laughs> from their parents on the terrace. And they would say, see on the avenue, ah. which means whether it's the Shonings Bakery, which is now maybe a little more famous as Cake Boss, yeah. <laughs> uh, home to him, and uh, City Hall Bakery, and then uh, other other things. I see Davis there on the lower corner, and, and Davis is still going, and uh, it, it's a place where you can buy knickknacks and cards and mm. even get a, a copy of something. If you've got a document, you need to copy. Place. <laughs> so it is, it's some of these things are multi-generational multi, uh, and multi-owner right. and stayed the same and others have been uh, changed in different ways. So, um, but it looks like somebody had a party. Uh, no, no, that's not a party. That's Why that's the when they put the out fridges there? out there. What was that? Was there I a guess reason? refreshments for, oh. <laughs> they must have had the longest power cord. I have no idea. But <laughs> I want. I did. I'm sure there's a story. The exactly. <laughs> there's a story behind it. We just have to find what it is. Got it. And in the meantime, uh, you can see a new show up here in the gallery. It's not here yet. We can speak honestly. Uh, but Donna O'Grady's new paintings are going to be displayed, and that looks like a famous street corner. I would guess near Park and Eleventh, but. I don't want to jump mm. too far ahead. Mm. Uh, maybe a place where you could get pizza, but that's a lot of places. <laughs> oh, town. yes, I know exactly where it is. Now I know what you're saying. Yes. Okay. And yes, it's, it's it is. Spark and 11. Actually, yep. uh, a, a beautiful planted yes. space that we have yes. here in Hoboken, 11th Street, which has a median strip. Correct. All kinds of things going. And if you just want to stop by, there's a lot going on. Here's Here is... The breezeway we were talking about and that is our man rand who is behind the scenes tonight but often mcs these shows with his wife lisa and they are playing ping pong but we've done tai chi there there are kids arts classes you can find on the calendar currently sometimes they're out there sometimes they're within the museum um, ballet classes also oriented to the kids audiences and then story time. And story time is a fun mm. storyteller reading to young children. And some of those are done here. And a number of them are done at the fire department on uh, Bloomfield. So uh, drop on by, join us, and, and have a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> and I appreciate it. Hey, that Thanks was great, Terry. <laughs> Good night.